Now we will look at an example of a circuit with inductors where the inductor currents can undergo instantaneous changes. Okay. Let us say we have a current I s and we have a switch like this. As I mentioned before, if you have switching action that could be equivalent to stepping the values of uh, currents or voltages in the circuit and let us say this switch is initially short circuited and it opens circuits at t equal to 0. Okay. And let us say we have these two inductors. Now, first of all we will determine the order of the circuit that will come soon. Now, before t equal to 0, this switch is short circuited and all of this current flows into the short circuit and all we have effectively is a circuit like this. Okay. And after t equals 0, we have the current source driving these two parallel branches. Okay. So, let us say the value of this is I s. So, we can think of basically solving this particular circuit, because we want the solution for t greater than 0 and some initial conditions, some values of L 1 and L 2 are given at t equals 0. Okay. Let me for simplicity assume that the current through L 1 and the current through L 2 are both 0 just before the step current is applied. Okay. Like I said, opening the switch is like applying a step current to this particular circuit. So, first of all, what is the order of the circuit? So, if I take the source free circuit that is with the current source open circuited, what do I have? I have the single loop R 1, R 2, L 1, L 2 and this is of course, equivalent to you can see that these two inductors are in series, these two resistors are in series. So, we have L 1 plus L 2 and a single inductor of L 1 plus L 2 and across that we have a single resistor R 1 plus R 2. And we know that if you have a single inductor in a circuit, it is a first order circuit and the time constant of the circuit is the value of the inductance divided by the value of the resistance which is across it. Okay. So, this will give you a time constant which is equal to L 1 plus L 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. Okay. So, this is how we calculate the time constant. We will now evaluate it formally and verify that this is indeed the case. Okay. So, let me copy over this part of the circuit and write the differential equation. Now, we will choose I 1 as the variable, I 1 is the current through L 1 and by Kirchhoff's current law here at this node, I know that the current through L 2 is I s minus I 1. Now, what is the circuit equation I am going to write? These three branches are in parallel. In particular, L 1 and R 1, the series branch is parallel with the series branch of L 2 and R 2. So, the voltage across this branch and that branch are exactly the same and that is the equation I am going to write. You can write it any way you want. You can write the KVL around this loop and so on. Now, the voltage across L 1 and R 1 will be L 1 time derivative of I 1 plus R 1 times I 1 and that is exactly equal to L 2 times the time derivative of the current through L 2 which is I s minus I 1 
plus R2 times the current which is I s minus I 1. Okay. So, if I group all the terms containing the variable I 1 to the left hand side, this is what I will get and on the right hand side I will be left with okay. and I will normalize it. So, that the term without the derivative okay, the 0 th order term on the left hand side has a coefficient of unity. So, that lets me read off the time constant. So, I divide all terms by L r 1 plus r 2. Okay. So, now this is in the standard form and if this coefficient is unity, the coefficient here is the time constant and it is exactly what we calculated earlier. Okay. That is the time constant and this equation also tells us a number of other things. Like I said, what we have is a circuit in which this current I s is being stepped at t equals 0. It goes from 0 to some value. Okay, Let me call that I naught. So, if I think of I s as a time varying function, it goes from 0 to I naught. Okay. So, the derivative of I s is an impulse at t equals 0. Okay. Now, I do not want to introduce impulses into our calculation and so on and it is not necessary also just to find out what we want. We can simply appreciate the fact that this first derivative of uh, I s is an impulse. So, this is an impulse whereas, this quantity which just has I s is finite. Okay. This already tells you that this I 1 cannot be continuous I 1 also must have a jump, because if I 1 is continuous then the slope of I 1 will be finite everywhere and you can never balance an impulse on the right hand side with only finite quantities on the left hand side. So, the only way for this equation is to be satisfied is for I 1 to have a step which means that the first derivative of I 1 d I 1 by d t is also an impulse. So, this part which is an impulse balances this part which is also an impulse. Okay. So, that is balanced by that one and this part which is finite will balance that part which is also finite. Okay. This is just at the instant of the step. Okay. So, at the instant of the step we have L 1 plus L 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times d i 1 by d t to be equal to L 2 by R 1 plus R 2 d i s by d t. Now, this means that this is just at the instant of the step. If I integrate both sides with respect to time, they will still be equal to each other between the same limits 0 minus and 0 plus. Okay. So, if I do this, this 
this quantity is nothing but I 1 of 0 plus minus I 1 of 0 minus okay. and this quantity here is nothing but I s of 0 plus minus I s of 0 minus. Okay. And I will of course, have the same scaling factors on the two sides. So, what this tells you is that R 1 plus R 2 in the denominator will cancel out. So, we will have the change in current across the step, across the instant of the step will be L 2 by L 1 plus L 2 times the change in the source current. Okay. Now, this is similar to what we had with capacitors. If you apply a voltage step across a series combination of capacitors, then across each capacitor you will have some capacitive ratio times the input step. Similarly, if you apply a step current to a parallel combination of inductors, then in each inductor you will have a step current and the size of the step in each will be related to the ratios of inductors. Okay. So, this you can calculate and again just like in case of capacitors when we applied uh, Kirchhoff's current law at the instant of the step we could ignore the resistors because if we had infinite currents in capacitors and finite currents through resistors the resistor part would not contribute to anything and we can kind of neglect it and that is what I have done mathematically here I have tried to balance the left and right sides separately for the impulses and the finite quantities. So, just like we ignored uh, resistors in parallel with uh, capacitors, in this case we can ignore resistors in series with inductors. So, just for the calculation of current steps, whatever R 1 we had here and R 2 we had here, these two are ignored while writing K C L. That means, that the voltage drops across them equals 0 that is they are short circuited. And this makes sense again, because if you have a step change in inductor current across the inductor you have an infinitely large voltage and this is a finite voltage across the resistor. So, we neglect it similar to how we neglected resistive currents in uh, circuits where capacitive currents were infinite. Okay. And we have L 1 and L 2 and we have I s and you clearly see that then the current divides in inverse ratios of the inductors. So, through L 1 we would have I s times L 2 by L 1 plus L 2 and through L 2 we will have I s times L 1 by L 1 plus L 2. Just like we uh, said that in a series combination of capacitors the charge cannot go anywhere from the intermediate plate the total charge there has to remain the same. Here also we can uh, state a similar rule where the total flux linkage will remain the same in the inductors just across the step. Remember all of these calculations are valid just to calculate the inductor currents immediately after the step. After that the resistor voltages will be significant and you have to go from there. Okay. So, I 1 which is the current through L 1 at 0 minus was 0 and I 2 at 0 minus was also 0 and just after the application of the current step, this will be L 2 by L 1 plus L 2 times I s and I 2 of 0 plus is L 1 by L 1 plus L 2 times I s. Okay. So, from these and the final values which can also be calculated quite easily for the final values in an inductor circuit, what is it that we know? Voltage across an inductor equals 0. This is of course, assuming constant or piecewise constant inputs. This is for a constant input, Okay, because then 
the inductor current also has to be constant and if the inductor current is constant the voltage across it which is the time derivative of the current will also be zero. So, that means that all inductors can be short circuited for the final value calculations when you have constant inputs. So, we have I s and I will short circuit L 1 and also short circuit L 2. and we have R 1 and R 2. So, this is a purely resistive circuit. So, we know that the final values will be I s times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 over there and I s times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 over there. Okay. So, this also we know, we know the time constant. So, we can construct the final solution very easily. Okay. So, I 1 of infinity will be R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s and I 2 of infinity would be R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s. Okay. So, from these and the time constant we can write down the functions for both I 1 and I 2. I have assumed 0 initial conditions. So, I 1 of t which is I 1 of infinity plus I 1 of 0 plus minus I 1 of infinity times exponential minus t by tau which this is of course, the general form for any first order circuit and I 1 of infinity we found was R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s and I 1 of 0 plus is L 2 by L 1 plus L 2 times I s minus I 1 of infinity which is R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s exponential minus t by tau. I will retain the symbol tau, but we know that tau equals L 1 plus L 2 divided by R 1 plus R 2. So, this is the expression for I 1 of t and I 2 of t is of course, the same general form I 2 of infinity plus I 2 of 0 plus minus I 2 of uh, infinity exponential minus t by tau. Tau is of course, the same and I 2 of infinity is R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s plus L 1 by L 1 plus L 2 times I s minus R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 times I s exponential minus t by tau. Okay. So, these are the solutions for I 1 and I 2 as a function of time and if you have numerical values you can substitute these and also we assume 0 initial conditions just before the step is applied. If we do have non-zero initial conditions then it is still quite easy. All we have to do is substitute the right values for I 1 of 0 minus over there. Okay. So, from there we can calculate everything. So, that is how we calculate uh, currents or any other quantity in a circuit where the inductor currents can have step changes. Okay?